All right, hi there. So I've had that introduction, so we'll just save time and jump right to it. This is just about roasting, not about brewing. If you want to do brewing, that's about three hours. Um, all right, why we roast our own? It's similar to why beer brewers brew their own beer. We want, we want control over our ingredients, control over our quantities, I mean our quality. It's incredibly fresh, it's not six to 12 months old like you'd get in the store. There are about 100 species of coffee and we're only seeing two or three that are commercially distributed. So you open up in vistas of hundreds of different strains and different species to play around with for flavors. Um, personal involvement, if you're a maker, it really, really feels good to be making it yourself from scratch. And cost, I'm getting killer coffee for about seven to $10 a pound after shipping, after electricity and such. It's easily on par with 50 to $100 a pound competition coffee, because I am buying competition beans at times but doing it myself. Roasting at home um, is getting quite popular. There are some issues that many people will hit, though. It generates a good bit of smoke, which needs to be vented. That smoke will set off your typical residential um, smoke alarm. Some roasters you can buy will have little catalytic converters or smoke filters. They sort of work. Chaff handling. Um, coffee has what we call chaff. It's a silver skin similar to that little papery shell of a peanut. It will generate that during the roasting process. You need to filter that out or somehow get it away because it is flammable and it doesn't taste very good. High heat, we're getting those beans up to about 450, 475. So you're generating a good bit of heat and a lot of home poppers don't hit that unless you start playing around with the wiring in them. And because of that heat, you want to agitate the beans constantly. This is why you can't just throw them on a sh baking sheet in your oven. And otherwise your beans are gonna scorch and it will definitely affect in your flavor. Most roasters are really sensitive to ambient air temperature, which causes issues if you want to address that smoke problem by roasting outside in your patio. What works fine in summer will not work in winter when your little bitty home roaster needs to elevate the temperature another 30 or 40 degrees higher than it normally does. And we also monitor our roast more by the color changes, the smell of the various, the smell will drastically change during the roast, and sound, we're listening for cracks, um, indicative of certain groups of the oils inside the coffee doing, so, let me sorry, volatizing. So this is, this is still working? Okay. The bean will change color during your roast. Uh, that number one, okay, no problem. You lose about 15% of the weight of your bean to moisture loss. So you look at, look at it as buy six pounds raw, you get five pounds roasted. The silver skin on these, which is not really visible, becomes chaff and there are crack, I already mentioned the audible crack stages. The green in the number one is what your raw bean looks like. It's much smaller than a standard bean. It's extremely dense. You cannot put it inside chocolate and chomp it like those chocolate-covered espresso beans. Not unless you want some dental work. City roast and full city, that third row down, nine, 10, 11, and 12, those are generally the roast ranges you're shooting for. And there's no set minimum or temperature for these. It's all gonna vary depending on what bean you pick and what style you're doing. Anything over Vienna is like, eh. And at 15, 16, those are a fire hazard waiting to happen. A little bit more heat, and now you're burning your bean. And I'm gonna briefly cover the um, roaster types. We generally, there's no real formal classification, but it really depends on how the roaster goes about get, getting the agitation heat done. Fluid bed roasting, fancy term for your hot air popper. Air is being pushed around inside the roaster and the beans float on that little bit of air just the way popcorn would. That gets you the agitation and your chaff will usually be ejected out the top so you'll need a chaff filter. Drum roasting is a mixture of convection, conduction roasting and the beans are rolling around inside a drum. Stirred and shaken is pretty much just what the tin says. You're putting the beans out in some kind of container and then stirring them for the agitation. Oven roasting we don't really recommend unless you want to smoke out your house. Some people will do it. They'll spread out the beans on a baking sheet, put it in the oven, open the oven every 30 seconds to a minute, stir it around, and close it again, and hope they don't get scorched tips. And heat gun dog bowl is a really good backup. As in, you take a heat gun, you pour your beans into like a stainless steel heat-resistant bowl, and you're just blasting it with a heat gun. Home hair dryers usually don't get to the temperatures you need. I've tried them. But they're, they're a good starter if you want to see how that's going to, how that's going to work out. A couple example of a fluid bed roaster is a Fresh Roast SR700. I picked this particular model because it has a programmable interface with an open API, and next year I'm probably going to be presenting on 
profiling and controlling your roaster via Go. If Brian doesn't beat me to it, because he just bought one of these. <laughs> so now we're sort of in this contest. I've been shipping raw beans, I mean cooked beans to Brian for a while. And that model runs about 250. You can also get an air popper off a thrift store, play around with it. Most air poppers don't get to the temperatures you want. I'm going to speed up a little bit here. And roaster, whoops, I went back instead of forward, my apologies. Roaster types, fluid bed. Popper mods, very popular with the maker group. You hit a thrift store, get a $2 popper, turn around and hang about $100 of Variax and other uh, monitors and probes and PIDs off it, and you've got a great home roaster that it was a lot of fun to build. There, your Google works for everyone, I'm assuming, so you can find all sorts of information on the web on how to hotwire a popcorn popper. Just be aware, it will void your warranty when you start playing around with the wiring of your popper and there's a little safety issue. I mean, you're playing with, you're model, modifying something that's gonna plug into your live electrical outlet in your house. And the wiring change you are making, if you're curious, is you're splitting off the heating element control from the fan control. So you can turn it, uh, cooling on and off as needed. And the adequate heating capacity, just keep in mind, many poppers don't get to the temperatures you need, or they'll do a two or three roasts and you burn them out. I keep hitting the wrong thing. Drum style, um, they look a lot like rotisseries. The one on the left is an open wire one called Be More, but those are also, that same style of drum is sold for um, grills. You can do the, a rotisserie style roaster over your grill. Don't really recommend it because it's very hard to keep that temperature consistent and monitor the bean stages. You can't really hear the crack, crack, crack of the beans when you've got this whirring motor going or it's hidden inside your grill. The rightmost model is a Gene Cafe offset drum roaster, which is what I have at home. They have a bit of a large counter footprint and run about $500, $600, but it has many hundreds and hundreds of batches put in it. A very reliable model. Um, more little low end, lower end stuff, Whirly Pop, that's the same thing you buy for popcorn popping. You can use it for coffee um, roasting because of the stirrers on the bottom will keep that bean agitated. Drawback on these besides that you can't look in it easily during the roast is you're standing there cranking that darn thing for 10 or 15 minutes while the roast goes and then cooling it off. Some people will use a frying pan with a stirring around or get the little mesh things you would use camping for popping popcorn over campfire. You get some pretty interesting flavors popping in a popcorn mesh container over a campfire. Really cool. This particular model by Nesco is um, called auger style agitation. The beans, instead of being tumbled in the drum, are pulled up by that auger and then fall back down. So it's more of a con um, conduction than convection. This model doesn't separate the chaff, so you're still stuck with, once the beans come out of the roaster, blasting enough cold air over it to get that chaff out. And it does have a smoke handler. This is a model for people who really have issues with the smoke. But again, the smoke handling is not 100% certain on these. And the darker your roast gets, the more of a smoke issue it's not going to be able to handle. Oh, I've got a minute left. OK. Further information. Sweetmarias.com is an excellent vendor. Um, I recommend them highly, for, especially for first timers. And they also gave me permission to use all the images. The images you saw on here are from their website. They said, use whatever you need. Um, homeroastingsupplies.com is the manufacturer of the SR700 model that can be programmed. If you're looking to just jump right into it, that would be the model to get the SR700. Um, homeroasters.org, Homebarista are two communities with very active forms. You can find all sorts of help, any, any question there. And coffee and barbecue channels on the Slack is where we are. And barbecue tends to go over into coffee a good bit. Okay. Thank you.